Well, as you can see from the RGB insanity behind me, today is CPU launch day. None other than the Ryzen 5000 series CPU. And if you didn't see my 5th of November speech with a lot of R's on the main level one channel, you should definitely check that out. But here today, we're here to talk about Linux and the 5800X and the 5900X, eight cores and 12 cores. It's mind blowing. It's utterly mind blowing. The systems that I did the most Linux testing with were with the ASRock Tai Chi X570 and the Aorus Master X570. Both of these motherboards are incredibly solid Linux experiences. Everything was basically solid. I mean, the X570 chipset is already pretty well vetted on Linux and AMD has worked extra hard to get the patches into the Linux kernel ahead of time. You do need to use a relatively recent distro. Hey, Fedora 33 was just launched. Ubuntu 20.04, 20.10 also have all of the stuff that you need in the repositories to be ready to go. We've got the full Pharonix benchmarks. The, the Pharonix benchmarks show some incredible performance uplift. Now, word of warning, GCC 10.1 has some bugs. So depending on what you're doing, you may run into some compiler bugs with GCC uh, that I tested like literally the day before this video came out. And if this piece is still in here, then there are still some compiler bugs with GCC 10 because reasons. Uh, but these exist across platforms. So this is nothing that's really Ryzen 5000 specific. Now pay attention to some of the benchmarks here. I'm gonna call out Tungsten specifically. Tungsten depends on Embry. Embry's a renderer. Well, Tungsten's a renderer. But Embry is like the math component of it and it's maintained by Intel. Something very odd is going on because this is showing the new 5000 series processors are slower than their 3000 series counterparts. Well, something's different now. When you first download Tungsten with the Pharonix test suite, it doesn't even detect SSE3. So it tries to compile Tungsten and by extension Embry with generic extensions. And of course that doesn't work. So I've modified the CMake files to explicitly use AVX, AVX2, uh, SSE3 and SSE 4.2. Now out of the box, the configuration is limited to SSE 4.2 because it says AVX doesn't really help this particular renderer, but your mileage may vary. So when you're looking at this comparison, know that you're comparing old data on 3000 series CPUs to new data. Is it shenanigans? I don't know, that's gonna need some more investigation. Just know that it's not actually slower on the newer CPUs, it's just less optimized by default. You can at least match the 3950X speed if you're willing to put in the time to tune it. This is historic though, because these eight core CPUs are nothing short of incredible. You may have seen the recent review that I did on the 4750G, it's Ryzen plus Vega and an eight core configuration. That makes a pretty handy, a pretty awesome little workstation, but make no mistake, the 5800X, it's eight cores, it's the new 10 core, it's the new 12 core. Boosting, performance, all of that, across the board, incredible. I mean, 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, 4.8 gigahertz, basically at idle. Using DMI decode on the 5800X shows a maximum boost clock of four, uh, 4850 megahertz. So that's not an overclock, that's just letting the CPU do its thing. And on the 3900X, the DMI decode shows 4950 megahertz. And this is really important because on the box they say 4.8 gigahertz max turbo. And even in Windows, you know, I would see 4.9 gigahertz, 4.95 gigahertz, boosting on up to two cores fairly regularly. I'm happy to report the performance in uh, Linux was basically the same. There was a very last minute patch to the kernel that improves that a little bit to bring it more up to parity with Windows. But even without that patch, this CPU has phenomenal performance. The eight core of the 5800X far exceeds the performance of the 10850K and the 10900K in a lot of benchmarks. There are a couple of benchmarks where Intel is sort of uh, neck and neck or pulling ahead, but in terms of real world application performance, uh, the performance here is nothing short of breathtaking. It is truly spectacular. If the Linux platform is going to give you a good gaming experience, which is a little, a little iffy sometimes, but it's getting better all the time, then 
this CPU is nothing short of spectacular. And also, in a 105 watt TDP, I mean, the absolute maximum current through the AM4 socket is 142 watts. That is unchanged from 3000 series CPUs. So when we move up to the 5000 series CPUs, power utilization is basically the same. We don't have to dump 300 watts of power into the CPU to get 5.3 gigahertz. It's just 105 watt TDP, 142 watts maximum under all boost pbo like as much crazy as you want to put into it overclocking of course on linux i don't really recommend overclocking amd has squeezed everything that can possibly squeeze out of the silicon the only variable that's really left for you for squeezing more performance out of the system is memory tuning 3800 megahertz is the sweet spot as i said in my sort of main channel you know normal every person review that is definitely something to shoot for to strive for on the Linux platform. Although, you know, if you can get 3600 CL14, I would rather have that than 3800 CL16 or CL19, especially CL19. CL16 is a little, that, that horse race is a little close. 3600, of course, is, is doable. The officially supported speed is 3200, 128 gigs, 3200. So if you're looking at using one of these as a workstation, 64 or 128 gigabytes of memory and the 12 core 5900X processor is a no brainer. It's the sweet spot in terms of like relatively high end uh, performance oriented computing and sort of a quasi workstation configuration. Uh, the cache reorganization means that 32 megs of cache is available to a single thread and that translates into lots of amazing real world performance. For a real deep dive on the, on the architecture and stuff like that, I've already covered that on the main level one channel, but the Linux performance and optimization and everything around the CPU, because really they're just dropping in Zen 3 chiplets in the old CPUs, basically everything else but the chiplet is already well tested and battle hardened and that translates into Linux as well. It's not like most day one launches where you know the Linux support is lagging behind a little bit. AMD's even got K10 driver support for the on die temperature sensors and stuff like that right in the CPU from day one. Although they're probably gonna improve that a little bit because it's still a little rough around the edges in my opinion. I had a little trouble with the 5900X getting it to detect more than two sensors, I don't know why. But it was functional and it worked and there weren't any other odd quirks or problems or anything like that. I mean, make no mistake, Zen 3 is a completely new micro architecture. They've taken all the lessons learned, they've poured it in here. But as far as I can tell, there's no there's no bugs that are showstoppers. Like there's no sake fault bug. There's no random number initialization bug. Uh, there's no any of the bugs that we have seen on some of the other launches. I feel like AMD has put tons and tons and tons of extra work qualification. Uh, they're, you know, they're a victim of their own success. They can hire people to like get all this stuff done. And so um, I got to, before this video, I got to talk, uh, you know, submit a few questions, very technical questions and get very good answers in terms of how things are being handled internally. So it's nice to see AMD treat Linux like a first class citizen. And the 5800X CPU, even though it's eight cores, performs like a 10 core CPU. I mean, heck, as, as far as that goes, it's almost as fast, about as fast as the 3900X, faster in some cases um, than AMD's previous CPU. So an eight core CPU performing like a 12 core CPU in multi-core tests and far and away better in single core tests is truly amazing. And of course, you know, when you move up to the 12 core, you get double the L3 cache, or you get another group of 32 megs of L3 cache for even more background processes. So if you're running a lot of VMs for simulation or testing, uh, having the extra 32 megs of cache and being able to sort of relegate that over somewhere else is really good. I do have some videos planned on updated VFIO. You know, of course, with the game cheating situation, things are, you know, the anti-cheats are trying to wreck everything with the VFIO. It's very, very discouraging. But a lot of progress has been made in Looking Glass. Looking Glass is really awesome. I've got a separate video coming up about that on the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. We've got a working Navi patch, a working Navi reset patch. Uh, it's a new project. It's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, you're gonna have to check that out. And that's a story for another time. At least it seems to work reliably a lot more. It's still not something that's gonna go in the Linux kernel, but at least I don't think it would. But it's uh, able to reliably reset Navi for VFIO and virtualization type 
uses, which is really awesome. Long time coming. So all in all, very exciting time in the computing industry. It's an historic moment. Like AMD has really shown us that uh, there is still a lot to be had in terms of desktop performance for the x86 micro architecture. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of how far, you know, how far they can go. They've got plans, you know, for things well beyond Zen 3. And if they continue to execute as they have up till now, uh, it's going to be just, it's going to be insane. Check out those Pharaonix benchmarks, the full suite of benchmarks across pretty much everything. It's honestly very, very exciting. My experiences on Linux, again, with the Aorus Master and the Tai Chi were quite good. I didn't really stumble over anything too complicated, but if you run into anything, come to the level one forums. I'll try to help you out. Um, but I don't anticipate that you'll really have many issues. I mean, you get a board, make sure the BIOS is updated, drop in your CPU, you're good to go. Q flash, you can flash your motherboards uh, without having a processor in them. So it's not really, you sort of avoid the chicken and egg problem because, you know, do you need a processor? to update your motherboard to support a newer processor? Well, no, not on most motherboards. Check out our guides for uh, flashing a motherboard for latest support. Uh, if you have an older motherboard, if you're already on AM4, you can just drop the CPU right in, which is really awesome. But there's an asterisk. If you've got a 400 series motherboard, support for that is probably not gonna be qualified until January. There are a few motherboard vendors that are already leaking and or releasing. I don't really know which one it is. Um, beta level firmware so that you could run a 5000 series CPU on a 400 series board but uh, I, you know the official word from AMD is that those BIOSes and the Agiza to support that is probably not going to really be bug free and 100% ready until January 2021 so B550 motherboards they're a pretty good deal if you're building a system. I would definitely recommend a B550 over an X570 motherboard if you're doing a fresh build right now, unless you need tons of high-speed M.2 connectivity and tons of PCI Express peripherals. If you're doing a VFIO build, I still do recommend X570 though. So, I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the Ryzen 5000 series launches and specifically the 5800X on Linux. Although you can see that the 5900X performance there as well, if you're a no compromises, I need all the performance. Inbound, I have the 5950X, the 16-core monster on the way, as well as the 6-core. Now, the 8-core is the new 10-core. Is the 6-core the new 8-core? I don't know. That remains to be seen. What's the 16-core? Is the 16-core the new 18-core? You know, I, I don't know. The 12-core the performs like the 16-core of last generation, so what are you going to do? I'm Wendell. This is Level 1. I'm signing out, and I'll see you later. Yay, Linux is a first-class citizen. Yay. All right. Catch you later. Exciting times. Exciting times.